first woman trainer in MLB. In a game dominated by men, one woman stands alone. Although Sue Falsoni does not swing a bat or throw a pitch, she does play a key role in allowing her teammates to do just that. Did you know you were the only woman at the time that you came in? Uh, I knew that, that there had been another woman massage therapist, but I knew there had not been an athletic trainer or physical therapist. There just really aren't women athletic trainers in Major League Sport. Uh, NFL has one woman, um, but as far as I know, the NBA didn't have anybody, NHL doesn't have anybody, and, and Major League Baseball didn't have anybody. In all of Major League Baseball, there is but one woman who's considered a starter. As far as management goes, I mean, they were great right off the bat. They wanted um, the right person, and they wanted the right fit, and, and Stan and, and Frank McCord and Ned Cluddy were, were just very instrumental in wanting to find the right person to create the right solutions for the team um, and being a part of the entire medical team. Um, and I was just honored that they felt like I could help help develop that. One of her teammates, Andre Ethier, has known Sue for many years and is grateful that she's a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, I first met Sue, it's got to be, I want to say, 01, 02. Um, I was uh, at ASU at that time uh, playing baseball there, and uh, we had a thing where we were sending a few guys in the fall to go uh, have some training done at uh, Athletes Performance in Tempe. Right. Um, where I went to school and it was it happened to be right across the street so I first met Sue then and uh, after I got drafted into pro ball I uh, continued working out there and unfortunately had the opportunity to do physical uh, rehab with her because of a few injuries I had uh, throughout minor league ball so I got to know her uh, you know a lot better then and uh, you know it's been kind of weird how uh, she's been following me ever since. I have worked with a lot of professional athletes in, in Major League Baseball as well as other sports. And so, you know, it's neat to sort of see people come back into your life and, you know, haven't seen people for a couple of years and they were with a different team or, you know, they hadn't been training. And then sort of to have them show up in this setting is, is so different. It's kind of cool how that, that circle of life sort of comes around. Sue has broken into a career once held exclusively by men. Head trainer Stan Conti says she's simply the best. Her, her qualifications sort of stood out. She's a, a physical therapist and athletic trainer, which is a good combination. And uh, she had a unique way of working with the players that I, I picked up on just in the training room. Well, I, uh, she was had the ability to use her techniques to get people on the field quickly, uh, which is... Uh, typical than a lot of physical therapists who are doing rehab and looking at long term. And when in baseball, we have to get them on the field every night, and uh, if they're hurt, to get them back as quickly as possible. She had that that uh, philosophy in her treatment, and that that's what really uh, got me thinking about getting her more involved than she was just as a consultant. What kind of things specifically do you um, do you do with them as far as medically and physical therapy and all that? Yeah. Um, you know, from a day-to-day -day perspective, just trying to focus on how do we keep them feeling as healthy as possible. You know, obviously it's a long season, um, and you just don't want to put Band-Aids on everything. You want to make things feel better for the long term. And so, you know, why are they having certain injuries? And what can we do not only to get them out there tonight, but to take this problem away. I think so many athletes function in pain, just thinking that that's sort of normal. Uh, and when you start to show them, hey, you can, you know, do this, do this, and they start to not have that pain, their eyes open up a little bit, and, and it's not normal to live in pain. And so, uh, you know, that can improve people's performance. So what challenges did Sue encounter in this all-male world? I think there was a, a couple players that came in and talked to me about how this was going to work. Um, and I think our response was, don't worry about it. Just if you need somebody, she's the person to see. And she earned her stripes in regards to treating players. And any... Um, reluctance by any of the players was very short-lived and there just never has been really an, uh, an episode or a problem um, any more than it's been with a male athletic trainer. Well you're a little uneasy anytime you you know you see a woman in the locker room you know uh, but you know after observing her the first spring you realize that uh, I mean she was there to do a job and then you know, being uh, last year, I was what 67 years old and aches and pains. I was coming back from a from a knee thing where I had a knee replacement, and I needed her services. And then at that point in time, I uh, I really didn't care how good she was for anybody else, but she she made me feel good. She knows her stuff, and you know. And then you then you hear her discuss with doctors about 
you know, which muscles are involved, and, and, and you realize that, you know, this is something more than reading it in a book. Younger players like Ethier, Kemp, and Loney may have a more open mind to a woman being in the clubhouse, but soon knows when to keep her distance. I respect their space. You know, I don't hang out in the clubhouse, and, you know, they know I hang out in the training room, so they're respectful when they come in there. And, you know, I think I just try to give them their space. I don't invade their world um, as much as I possibly can. Sue has found that the best way to fit in is to sometimes be the big sister, sometimes be just one of the guys. Well, there's no question that the Dodgers have accepted you because I remember last year during the playoffs and the champagne celebration and the hazing of the rookies, you were one of the rookies that got dressed up. <laughs> yes, and they were so kind and so cute. They really could have tossed me under the bus, but they were great. They got me a cat suit and they got an extra large because they didn't want it to be tight and they didn't want to make me feel uncomfortable, which I thought was adorable. So that's what I ended up looking like. But I thought it was really sweet that they even took that into consideration of they don't want to make me uncomfortable, but they wanted me to, to feel part of the team. So that was pretty cool. You know, I've, I know her personally, you know, just from knowing her all these years now. So, uh, you know, it's great to be able to have a friend and, uh, and a person who uh, I guess not only seeing you grow up, but seeing you mature and uh, can call you out when you do certain things and, and let you know if you've changed from, uh, you know, when you were a sophomore in college to now. And so uh, it's nice having her around. Kind of a big sister for you, I guess. Yeah, like a big sister, Phil. So I know her uh, pretty well, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a nice uh, relationship we have. I just saw Nomar uh, yesterday embrace her because, I mean, she has a way of... Uh, making everybody feel like they're the center of attention all the time, and, and that's not easy. She's got a great sense of humor. Uh, she's very easy to be with, and as I say, the most important thing, and, you know, baseball is a business, is that, uh, you know, guys search her out when they when they need, uh, you know, to have that, that ache and pain go away. Are you surprised in 2009 that you are the only woman in here? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. At the same time, like there are so many more women athletic trainers and physical therapists and strength coaches now in the high schools and at the collegiate level. It's just a matter of time until we see it more in the professional level. It's just, you know, it's just kind of the last level to catch on. So for the younger guys that, that went to college and it's nothing for them to see a female in the training room because their universities had had a, a bunch of women in the training room and in the weight room. So it's it's really just sort of um, a paradigm shift for, for some of the older guys or, or older coaches that have been around. But for the younger guys, it's it's old hat. Yeah, and you know, and I, I hadn't thought of that either. You're right. I mean, in some of the other places, women are more, they're seen more and they're around more. But, you know, from the perspective of just noticing that you're the only one, it just seems like that's crazy, right? I mean, I, I know it is. It's crazy. I had a friend say, I never see you in the dugout. Do something that makes you stand out. I was like, well, I, I don't know how else I can stand out more, but okay. In the end, there's two things you should know about Sue Felsoni. She's a Buffalo Bills fan. Yeah, I grew up in <laughs> Buffalo, so, you know, by law, you have to be a Buffalo Bills fan. And she's still just a girl. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I'll go shopping, uh, like come back with tons of pairs of shoes, you know, just something to make sure I stay connected to that feminine, feminine side.